a couple times, maybe even five times, and then you ultimately just leave the website without actually trying to use it at all. And maybe you did this for a number of reasons. My reason was I couldn't wrap my head around why React was useful to me. Because each time I look at possibly adopting new technology, I want to know upfront how this is going to make my life as a developer better. And once I did finally wrap my head around it and everything started to click, I realized that React.js is a top tier technology for creating flexible component based user interfaces. So let's jump in. This is getting started with React.js. We're going to build a simple to do list. So just to set the foundation, let's talk about the environment we're going to be working in a little bit. We're working with primarily two files here, an index.html, which is just going to be a simple HTML file that will write our HTML in, and then a component.jsx file. The component.jsx file is the file that we use to write all of our React code. There's also a third file that's going to be generated called component.js. Because JSX is a syntax that's not understood by the browser, we need to transpile JSX into JS, aka JavaScript, th so that the browser can actually run it. We're going to use Gulp to do the actual transpiling from JSX to JS, and then also start a local development server. Since this video is not really about Gulp, I'm not actually going to cover any specifics about Gulp, but there's a file called notes.txt in the directory that you can find instructions on how to actually start this server. But really what we're going to focus on is the HTML piece and the React piece. So we'll start by looking at our HTML shell here. We've included two includes here, basically the React and React DOM development builds, and then we've included our component.js, which is the transpiled version of our React code. And then we simply have an empty body tag, which we're going to be adding our actual element in here shortly. Before we can include our component in the HTML, we first have to create our component. So we're going to start by creating a to-do list component that does only one thing, and it shows the words to-do list. Each React component is a class, and that class extends react.component. This is true across all components. Each component class has some methods that we're going to need to implement, but the one that we're interested in right now is called render. Now what this method does is it renders the actual JSX that you write into here into your HTML. Render is called at both component initialization as well as any time the component state updates. And we're going to talk about what state is shortly. So to render HTML, we have to do return parentheses. And inside the parentheses, this is where we can write our actual JSX. So we need a root element. So we'll just do a simple div. And then inside that div, we're going to do an h4. And we're going to write to-do list. So you might be thinking to yourself at this point, oh god, HTML and JavaScript. Every person I've ever seen do this is a terrible developer and they don't know what they're doing. But this is React. This is JSX. And this is way better than pasting HTML inside like strings and outputting them with JavaScript. This is not the same thing. So just bear with me and you'll see the true power shortly. So let's go to our browser now and refresh the window and there is nothing there. So the reason there's nothing there is we haven't actually programmed where this component should show up. So let's do that now. So the way React works is you start by taking a div, assign it an ID, we're going to call it to do. And then that's going to be where the component is going to be inserted into. The second step is you have to use react-dom.render to actually insert the element into that div. So react-dom.render takes two arguments. The first is going to be react.createElement and then specify to-do list. And that's going to be the name of the class that we just created. The second one is just going to be a standard DOM element to insert into. So document.getElementById to-do. So really this is just saying to take to-do list and render it into the to-do div. And now we come back to our browser and hit refresh. We now have our text to-do list. It's worth mentioning now that if we look at our Chrome dev tools, we can see our div id to-do contains div and h4 inside it. And this is the exact same thing that was inside our component class. So believe it or not, our HTML file is completely done. We don't have to write anything else inside there. All the work we're going to do for the rest of this video is going to be inside this component.jsx. So right now our component's not that useful, so let's make it useful. So next we have to do is talk about component state. And the purpose of state is to describe exactly how the component should render, what it should show, what it shouldn't show, and what specific pieces of dynamic data it should show inside the component. And state is nothing more than just a plain JavaScript object containing any number of values, objects, and arrays. We can establish initial state inside our component's constructor. So we have to first create a constructor. And then that constructor takes one argument called props. And then the React way is to call super props. That way it calls the react.component props method. The constructor is completely optional if you don't need to actually do anything at the component construction point. 
So we are creating a to-do list, which means one piece of initial state we have to create is the to-do list items. And of course, its initial state is there are no items. So to establish initial state, we can do this state equals empty object, items equals empty array. It's probably worth mentioning what props does as well. If we go back to our index.html file, in our create.element function, this does actually take a second argument. So we'll do like name em. The second argument is going to be an object. So if I do name em, when I come into the component, props.name is going to be equal to em. So props just becomes whatever is specified as the second argument on create element. But we're not going to use that today in this video. So next thing we need to do is show the actual to-do list items inside our render method. So to do that, we can write any JSX inside our HTML by using curly braces. Inside here, we can use just plain JavaScript. So we'll start by using standard array map. So this.state.items.map, then item i, and then we can use our standard arrow function with parentheses this time. Now this is all still valid plain JavaScript so far, but now what we're going to write inside this map is going to be HTML. I figure we could just use a list of items for this, so we'll do li, and then inside here we could just do item. Now because we're using li, it means we also need ul, so we'll copy this into there. So far so good, we can come to our browser and do refresh, but of course there's nothing in our to-do list because our item state is empty. But what happens if we add a couple items here? Item 1, item 2. When we come back to our browser now and refresh, now suddenly we have two items in our list. So this is where we're getting into the true power of React, is React was able to take these items in the state and create a UI out of it. But this is still not very useful. Let's take this UI one step further and actually allow the user to add items into this list. So to do this, we need a couple new elements. The first is going to be an input box, type text, and the second is going to be a button, type button. Then for the button text, we'll just do add item. So when the add item button is clicked, we can use an onClick handler to actually execute a method that's inside this component. So we'll do onClick this.add. We'll just tidy this up a little bit. And then we can actually add a method here called add. And this will call when somebody clicks that add item button. So we have our add method, but the question now becomes how do we get the value of our text box? And this is where an important React principle comes into play. React has what's called one-way data binding meaning it takes the state and it renders things with that state. However, when you update things that have been rendered, it doesn't immediately update the state. This is different than technology like Angular, which has two-way data binding, meaning the state updates a box, but if you update the box, it also updates the state. That's not true with React. So the React way of doing this is to create a new state item for this box's value. So we'll come up here and we'll call this like item input and it'll be defaulted as a blank string because that's what the box will be by default is blank. So when we come back down our text box, we have to add two new things here. The first is going to be value, and the value of course is going to be set to this.state.itemInput. The second thing we have to add is an onChange, and this is going to be handled by, we'll call it a function called this.update. Now we'll just tidy this up a little bit here. So what's happening is every time that input box changes, it's going to call the method called update within this component. And we're going to add that method to here now. When the update is called, it's going to be called with the event property. And this will allow us to get the value of that box. So at this point, what we want to do is update the state with the new value of that text box. You might be tempted at this point to just do this.state.item input equals and then whatever the value is, but that's not the right way to do it. State updates happen in two phases. The first is the actual updating of the state object, and the second is the re-rendering of the component with that new state change. So to do this, React provides a method called setState. And setState takes a JavaScript object as its argument, and then what you can provide here is key value pairs of items within the state to update. Now React will take your object and merge it with the state object, so you don't have to reestablish all the state items. So in this case, I just need to update item underscore input. And I'm going to set that to the value of event.target.value, which will give me the text from the text box. Now because I'm using this, I need to make sure that I properly bind that method with the right version of this. So I'll do this.update equals this.update.bind this. 
So, so far so good. We can check out our HTML and we can see that we have an empty to-do list. We have a place that we can type and of course add item doesn't do anything because we haven't implemented the add function. So that'll be the next thing that we do now. So the last thing we're going to do is wire up this add button. And again, we're going to use this set, set state, but we have to use it in a slightly different way. The other way to use set state is to provide a callback. And the reason for the callback is so we can get access to the previous state. This is necessary because we're setting the this.state.items to the previous value plus a new item. So anytime you need to use the current state of something as a set state update, you need to use previous. And the previous will just be whatever the current state is at the time it updates. So in here you can do return and then empty object and then inside here you would put the items that you want to update their part of the state. So there's two things we want to update. First is item.input. We want to set that to blank string because once they add an item, you want to just make that box empty again. And the second is we need to set the items. And we're going to set the items to previous.items.concat prev.itemInput. Now all we're really doing here is just adding that item onto the end of the array. Now the reason I didn't just do prev.items.push is because React specifies that you should not mutate the actual previous value inside this callback. And just like our update method, we have to bind it to the proper this. So let's have a look at our UI. So I'll refresh it. Item 1, add item. Item 2, add item. Item 3, add item. So that's it for our to-do list. Let's actually review what we did here. So we start with a blank component. We create a constructor, and in that constructor, we set some initial state. And this initial state represents the value of the box for the new item that you're inputting, as well as the items that should show in the to-do list. We create our actual user interface, which is nothing more than a title, an unordered list, with a bunch of list items that are in a, a sort of for loop. Not, not a for loop, you know, it's items.map, but it does loop over every item that is in the items array. We create a text box, which every time we change the value, it updates the state. And then we create a button, which calls this.add. Then in that add function, we're calling set state to update the, the actual input to nothing. And then we're adding the item onto the end of the items array. And then in our HTML file, we're using react-dom.render to actually render that to-do list component into the to-do div. Now in the description is going to be all the code that I used here, and I did make a version that has more functionality. We're not going to go into the actual code piece of it, but I did a version that counts the number of items. It accepts the name as a prop, and then it actually has a remove button to remove the item. So when you run this, you'll have some additional functionality to look at. I just didn't want to complicate the video by going through all that code. And that's it. Hopefully this was a good primer to React. It really is great technology, and I recommend everybody check it out and or use it in your next project. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.